We expect to find inspiration in situations that are joyous, beautiful and energizing. But this is not always the case. Not necessarily, because sometimes sorrow and loss are the seedbed for a flowering of creativity, as the work of Amita Makin goes to show. Originally from South End, Port Elizabeth, Amita Makin lived and studied in the UK and Switzerland before returning to South Africa with her husband. She's a South African artist of Indian descent who sees embroidery as part of her DNA. She has been inspired by South African icons such as Miriam Makeba, Brenda Farsi, Mahatma Gandhi and even the late great Nelson Mandela. Her artworks can be seen in galleries across South Africa and today we get to meet the talented Amita Markin. After settling in Pretoria in 2003, Amita began her fine art studies. She first specialised in oils before discovering the potential of needle and thread. Embroidery became her preferred medium and in 2009, she received a runner-up award in the Sassol New Signatures National Art Competition. Her first solo exhibition followed a few months later in KwaZulu-Natal. Now, Amita, degrees in arts, political science, English, uh, you have your honours, you have your masters, everything being expressed in the artworks that you see around us. Where did it all start? I was always interested in painting and drawing as a child. My love for embroidery was initiated by a lecturer who was based in Pretoria, Johan Conradi, who actually noticed my affinity and attention to detail. In 2008, I started embroidering at a small little haberdashery store in Pretoria. And this is when I commenced this large portrait of my mom which took me eight months to do over eight hours a day. Tell me that history behind that. That portrait, which is called Loose Ends, is actually a symbol of my grief and sadness and the memories that I had of her. I wanted to immortalize her within the context of the illness that she had, Alzheimer's disease. The work explores, you know, this journey uh, which is actually a universal journey about a mother and daughter and the love that we have for each other in the face of, you know, this illness and the death and dying. Let's talk about some of the artworks that we see behind you. I'm looking at this amazing black and white pic of Gandhi. What can you tell us about it? I worked over that work for over probably two to three years. It's a monochromatic embroidered work done on khadi cotton, which is actually hand-spun cotton, the kind of cotton that Mahatma Gandhi would have woven. Of course, the, the khadi cotton is also a symbol of freedom and liberation and self-sufficiency for the Indians in India. So when I'm working, my concept and my medium are integrally linked. Mita, portrait of yourself, what is it all about? It's called African Renaissance, based on a photograph that was taken of me in 2009, soon after the passing of my mother. I was grief-stricken. It's a documentation of the fact that time is living me. The circle is actually symbolic of the endless cycle of life and rebirth. I've integrated the embroidery with fragments of my mother's saris, which I'm using more and more in my art which is also a metaphor for the Indian identity in South Africa. Where do you find the inspiration and motivation to keep going forward? I draw inspiration and strength from spiritual scriptures. I also love working from old photographs and stories inspire me. Amitha's work has also been purchased by the Benetton Collection in Italy, while other pieces form part of prestigious local collections. In addition to successful solo exhibitions, Amitha receives many invitations to present her work alongside other trend-setting South African artists. This work is called Loose Ends 2. In this work I explore the sacred Hindu festival called Rakshabandhan, which is an annual festival where a sister ties a, a raki for the brother to celebrate the sacred bond and the love that they share. My brother uh, passed away in 2006 and um, last year the anniversary of his passing fell on the day of Rakshabandhan. Mm -hmm. So when I was invited to participate in this exhibition called I Take It All Back, I wondered what would I take back if I could. 
So in this work I take back death and I take back time. So I've put seven rakis on this work and I've attached ribbons and infinite threads to it in the hope that it will reach him through the universe. Now I see there's this sort of gold writing, almost as words that's going on. What is that? I've also included texts from the Bhagavad Gita, um, the divine song of God. For example, part of the text, I'd like to quote from the divine song of God. Change is the law of the universe. What you know of as death is indeed life. I am an artist. I paint and embroider to express myself. How did I come to be where I am? I am a blossom of an age-old, sturdy, resilient tree planted by my ancestors and nurtured in African soil. I am a South African woman of Indian descent. While I trace my Hindu ancestry to the Indian state of Gujarat, four generations of my family have been in South Africa. My story is multifaceted. It is about a journey, a journey from one continent to another, a journey to escape poverty, a journey spanning generations, a personal journey, a collective journey. This is a story of a long and arduous journey to freedom.